Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. A purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today I have a reply to one of your comments. One of you asked me a question that I've gotten asked many times, kind of different variations of it, but I thought it was it was good. It was really good to the way it was asked, it was good. I enjoyed it actually. So I'm gonna share it with you. All right, so here's the question. So how do you get the spirits to come to you? You just think of them and they show up? How do you know that they'll just be there when you want them to? This is very intriguing to me. <laughs> I love that comment, you guys. That's an awesome comment. All right. So how do I get the spirits to just come to me? How do I get the spirits to come to me? Well, I light a lot of candles and I spray some essential oil and I, I really go into a deep meditative state and I, I have to turn all the lights off and no, 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 you guys, come on. This is real. As a psychic and a medium, at Above Life Channel here. My goal and part of my purpose is to be very real with you about psychic work and mediumship so that you know it's not what you see on reality TV, so that you're not so hard on yourselves when you're trying to do it for yourself. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Number one, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be quick to quit. That's the thing. A lot of us are quick quitters. We quit quickly. Don't be a quitter quickly not too quickly when it comes to spiritual connection or communication. So how do I get spirits to come to me? That takes lots of practice. Actually, not really that much, truly. So here's an example. It happens in a lot of different ways, okay? So I can get connection with spirit when I'm literally doing something mundane like folding the laundry or getting dinner ready because my mind is not busy. It's not chaotic and busy with other things. It's just kind of in a more relaxed state. I'm more receptive. So I can start um, a spiritual communication in just doing mundane, normal things. And sometimes what happens is my inner voice, my inner spirit, we all have a spirit inside of our bodies. It's you, your spirit. That's what you call intuition, your soul's voice. Some people call that your higher self. Some people call that your intuition. And it doesn't matter what you call it. You have a spirit inside of you, it's you. And oftentimes the information that you begin to get is through your inner voice. So it might be through thoughts that you're thinking. You're thinking about something, about oh something you're supposed to do tomorrow or scheduling a haircut for the kid or whatever you need. And all of a sudden you get this insight, kind of like a little bubble of a thought, but it's not connected or related to anything in your, like what you're thinking about, your, your normal life. And so that interjection of spirit contact it's not external or outside of you. It could be a message from a spirit guide, an angel, or one of your you know, spirit animals or that kind of a thing, but it's coming up through you. So it's connecting through your spirit, coming from you inside of you. So it's coming in your mind from inside of you or coming from your gut or coming from like the core of your body inside of you. And it comes up and it kind of feels like a little, like a, like a cartoony thought bubble. It's kind of how it feels, but it's not external outside of you, but it's unique to the pattern of the thoughts that you're having right now. I hope that's not too complicated, but that's kind of the basic way that spirit contact begins, right? You have to be open in your own intuition to your own spirit. If you're not open to your own intuition, you can't connect outside of you. If you can connect outside of you, you have to use a lot of extra help and you're probably not getting accurate information and by extra help i mean like um uh, tools like card decks or somebody that does a card reading or has a specific structure to how they do readings and a specific lineage or um, process that they use like a tarot deck which is a specific thing or totem animal cards which is a specific thing those are specific like in this little arena, here's what we think. It's not the be all, end all, everything. It's not all for you and right on for you. 
Am I explaining this right? I feel like when I'm talking about it, I'm not explaining it right. Okay. If you can't connect with your own intuition, if you're not hearing your own self, if you don't care enough about your own inner voice, then give up on the spiritual communication. You best stop now. Let's be real. Let's be real, you guys. Here to Bub Life Channel, we are real. I am real. Mm -mm. So in order for me to be able to be a good psychic, a good medium, a good connector, and you can be a good connector too. You can connect with spirit. You can communicate with spirit. You can. But in order for you to do that, you have to have a level of respect and relationship with yourself and your own spirit in order to be able to effectively do that. Okay? And if you go to somebody else that's like a, a reader or something, there are really good um, people who are very good, intuitive, psychic mediums that, are, that utilize tools like a card deck or, or do readings, like air quotes readings. And that can give you some information, yes, and it can be accurate. But it's not the whole picture. It's not the whole view because you are the part that provides the whole view and what's right for you. Do not let someone else tell you what's right for you. You have to use your own level of discernment, okay? So let's get, it, let's get back to the question of how, how do I get the spirits to come to me? I don't get the spirits to come to me. I'm not some beacon for spirit. I don't think anyway. I mean, maybe, I doubt it. Um, so when I'm working, and I'm planning to do channeling, I can feel, I, I myself am open. I open myself up to spiritual energy. Specifically, I have boundaries, I have rules about how I work, when I work, I have an on, 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 on off sign, um, open and closed, you know. I'm very specific about when I have boundaries, when I, I'm gonna do my spiritual work, when I'm gonna do spirit contact for you, for example to record for you. And I do it when I feel like doing it. And when do I feel like doing it? When I feel, when my energy is good, when I've done um, my self-care stuff that I've done, when I feel like I'm in a state where I can be a, as good of a channel as I can be without bringing my own baggage in, without needing some kind of approval or recognition for my work, really just being a clean slate as much as I can. And then I channel, I have a list of people. I have a huge list, you guys. When you guys recommend or request people, I write them on a list. And then I kind of, if I don't feel, if I don't feel someone right away that I might want to talk to, it has to come to, for my desire. If I don't want to talk to somebody, it's not going to be a good channeling video. You guys are going to hate it because I'll be bored. You'll be bored. It is not going to be fun. And when I started Above Life Channel, it was about really enjoying the process of channeling and sharing that with you. And so I have to be really authentic in that. If I ain't feeling somebody, like there's a couple of people that you guys keep requesting, I'm like, I don't feel that person. I could do it because you want me to, but that's not really my style is to do what other people want me to do. That's not really my style. I gotta be true to myself. And if I feel it, I'm, and I'm interested in talking to that person, I'm gonna talk to that person. So that's how it goes. So. I have clear boundaries about when I work. I don't walk into the grocery store and start talking to people's dead moms. That's on television. <laughs> That's not real life. I mean, you shouldn't be doing that. If you're just learning your psychic stuff, it's easy to like be really, really open and be like, oh, you know, really super sensitive to energies everywhere you go and wanting to go to historic places and feeling the energies and stuff. Yeah, okay. I get that that might seem kind of fun in the beginning when you're opening and experiencing energy in different ways, but I don't recommend that. You need to have some kind of boundaries around yourself. You gotta be a person first who has a spirit. And then when you're, you've got your connection with your own spirit and you are your guide, you are, the decider about energies and you have healthy boundaries, that's when you connect with spirit. It's not hard to do, but most people quit too quickly and don't recognize that it's a practice. It's like stretching a muscle. Your intuition is a muscle. I have a friend that said that to me once. Intuition is a muscle. You've got to work it out. You can't just run five miles without ever walking one you know so it's a practice it's a series of things that you do so that your energy is in a prime spot and you're feeling 
able to connect. And you also have to recognize that in your mind, if you want things too much, your ego mind will kind of play tricks on you in regards to intuition and spirit connection. If you're so desperate for some kind of evidence or proof, then you're not going to get it. You're just not, you're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get an authentic connection. You might get some funky paranormal experience that's a one-time thing or uh, mischievous spirits. Ooh, that's so interesting. Uh, no, that's not the kind of evidence you want. You want the kind of evidence that you know in your heart, in your gut, in your own intuition, in your own spirit that is true for you, that is accurate for you, that's healthy for you, that's positive for you, that's what you want. You don't want to need creepy, mysterious murder stuff to stir the pot and attract to the drama. And you don't want your mind to be so desperate for evidence or proof that's not, like you guys know that. Here at Above Life Channel, I, I don't Google, you can Google. I'm not here to share some channeling that gets you so interested in the drama of it that you have to watch all the time and that you distract from your own important life purpose to learn more about psychic stuff when your life purpose is your point and your goal and inspiring your spirit is the point and the goal, okay? So don't distract with drama and, oh, interesting stuff other people can do and you can't. No, it's not about that. It's not about that at all. All right, so the spirits, I don't just get them to come to me. <laughs> I'm not like honey to a bear, that's, that's not how it is. Um, but that's a fair question though, that's really a fair question. And I hope that I've answered that a little bit. And I also wanna talk about, um, I also wanna respond to, oh, do you know that they'll just be there? Yes. I do know that they'll just be there. There have been times from time to time when I want to channel somebody and I can't really feel connected to them. And if I don't, then I don't do the channel. I just don't. I just don't do it. I move on to the next thing. So for you, you don't just have one spirit in the afterlife you can connect or communicate with. You have many. You have relatives. You have archangels, spirit guides. You might have totem animals. You got a lot. So there's not just one, oh, that person, oh, I can't connect. Okay, I guess I'm just, if you're gonna give up that easily, don't even try to do spirit communication. In fact, if you're gonna give up that easily, don't try to do anything in your life because you won't be successful. Ooh, does that sting a little bit? Yeah, well, here's reality, you guys. This is real life. This is real life. So create healthy boundaries, start a practice with a desire for connection and the purest desire that you can have is to connect with your own spirit to listen to your own intuition to listen to your gut to start to feel the energy of you so that then you can discern when there is opportunity to connect with a the spirit they do it is true that afterlife um, spirits will do visitations where they will come and visit with you but it's usually not like a random thing like they don't just show up in the kitchen in the middle of the night. You know, that's like a paranormal, maybe your house is haunted, you have an earthbound spirit thing, but that's not usually grandma. You know, she's not gonna scare you, unless it's your brother in the afterlife and he's funny, then maybe if it's a prankster, maybe. But usually, you guys, it's not dramatic. It's really nothing like the movies, it's not. It's um, a little more boring than that. It's more mundane, it's more routine than you think it is. And it happens all the time. You get signs, you get symbols, you get metaphors, you get random thoughts in your mind, gifted to you from your dad in the afterlife. You get a song on the radio from your best friend in the afterlife. I mean, just at the time that you need something most and you're really just feeling your heart, you feel like there's somebody at your shoulders or you feel a warmth over your shoulders. It could be a spirit guide or an archangel saying, hey, you're not alone. You might feel lonely, but you're not alone and we love you. That's what it's like, you guys. It's really subtle. It's not dramatic and Hollywood style <laughs> and mysterious and creepy. And it's not evidence-based, it's experience-based. In order to have the experiences, you gotta have, you gotta consistently have a routine or you got, you've got to put yourself in the experience in order to have the experience. It doesn't just come find you. You have to be open to showing up 
maybe through meditations, maybe through yoga practices, maybe through working with chakras or energy centers of the body. There are a lot of different ways you can be open and create healthy boundaries around spirit contact and understanding your own energy that can assist you with this. But it's subtle, you guys. It's really subtle. All right. Thank you so much for your question. That was awesome. I totally appreciate it. I'm sure that people probably think that I just sit here and like ohm all day long and I never leave the house and I'm always in meditation. No, please. I have a really busy life. I got four kids, four dogs, super busy house, crazy dreams, visions, <laughs> vision as in life purpose and business ideas and all sorts of stuff, content I'm creating for my, my work and my projects and things that uh, I don't just, uh, oh, man, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so, ah, uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for watching Above Life Channel. I hope that this video has inspired your spirit and hey, I've been super real with you. A little bit sassy real, snarky real, but that's okay, you guys. That's who I am, really. I mean, I like to kind of poke a little bit. So I hope you get the point. And I hope that this has inspired you, given you some hope, because the purpose is for you to live your best life. It really is. That's, that's why we're here at Above Life Channel. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching.